So now I want to introduce my interview with uh, uh, Mark uh, Meharry, uh, who is a CEO at Music Glue, recorded at Music Connected uh, in London just yesterday. I'm here with uh, Mark Meharry from uh, Music Glue, and actually I haven't had you guys on the show before, so thanks for joining me. How's it going? Oh, it's going very well. Thank you for having me. Excellent. So uh, we'll get about uh, we'll get on Music Glue in a second, but first of all, let's talk about your panel, which was on uh, Directive Fan. And so uh, there were a lot of uh, different points of view here, but uh, for the most part, of course, uh, it looks like in the on the independent sector uh, side of things, most people are pro Directive Fan. It's just a question of how it's managed, right? Um, Yes, I think I think everyone everyone knows that they have to do it, um, and the struggle at the moment is the understanding of exactly what it is. Um, in particular, uh, what what we have found is that uh, within the label community, the, the 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 jump and it is a jump between being a wholesale provider to being a retailer is quite a significant shift in mentality, and um, it. Whereas we've, we've been working with predominantly managers up to now, managers, venues, um, festivals, which are very experienced in retail, they get it and they understand it. And they, uh, whereas in, within the label community, um, when we start talking about, well, what is the price that you want to sell to your customer? What is the post and packaging that you want to add on? Have you considered the VAT that you have to pay for your sales and where those sales are? Suddenly you get a lot of alarm bells ringing. And um, that's part of what we wanted to try and communicate today is that, hey, guys, it's not that complicated, but it is more complicated than just sticking something in in your whole t typical wholesale model and shipping off a, a crate of things to a yeah. retailer who would take care of the rest of it. It's, it's a lot to it. Absolutely. And it feels like mer merchandise is kind of the uh, unspoken topic in the music industry right now because it's such a huge, uh, hugely important part, but there's actually not a lot of information out there around suppliers, around how it works, uh, and, and it's kind of a bit of a dark art still. Uh, it's a massively dark art. Um, there, there are a bunch of players out there. We're, we're only just start. We're only now getting our heads around actually who who the players are, um, and but it has been around since the dawn of the music industry. You know, T-shirts have been part of what what this industry has been about for a long time, and the money has been a, a way for for a lot of acts to actually survive. Yeah. Um, now it's going onto a global scale, and retail is becoming a global thing. Um, fulfillment now has to happen globally. So the sourcing of these products, the creation of the products, I mean, and that's that's all changing a lot as well. The, um, we work with now uh, third-party suppliers that do print-on-demand for T-shirts, which, which is a fascinating product in itself, which is the ability for a band to upload just a picture, pick what color shirt they want, um, and what quality of shirt, put a mark up and say, I want to make four pounds, five pounds per shirt, and that's it, no stock risk. And that's with their tote bags, um, with their hoodies, everything. So there's a lot of changes happening in that world of merchandise to remove. And people don't, it's never really been well understood because it's, it can be really expensive. The stock risk element of merchandise is huge. That, you know, and so many bands that you know about will have boxes and boxes of T-shirts and CDs and all sorts of things sitting in their, in their loft. We've got to get away from that mentality. There should never be stock sitting around. It should be well thought through, only buy the things that you can possibly sell. But that's, again, education. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a slow process. People don't like change. Sure. <laughs> and we talked about uh, uh, you know, direct fan services uh, on the show recently uh, in view of the, the top spin sell-off as well and, and the way that the company was split up in, in two halves. So do you think that uh, there's going to be a gap left in the U.S. there for uh, more companies to come in and, and fill what, what they were doing? Or... Uh, do you think they're going to be able to maintain sort of the, the audience they already had? Um, I don't know the full details of what Sorry, happened. I don't at, think anybody at, does exactly. No, it's I, I can guess and we, we're, we're getting a lot of work coming in from the States especially at the moment um, as people are leaving the Topspin platform. Um, my guess is from knowing, so you know we've been doing this longer than they have been doing it and that we've been slowly building. We have not done any marketing campaigns. So a lot of people don't actually know about Music Loop, but we've got a, a lot of clients and some, you know, some massive international superstars down to, down to thousands of tiny clients. But we've been learning all the way on how to do this. And what we've worked out over the years, and which is absolutely fundamental, is this is logistics. This is, right. our business model is not like your, your uh, Facebooks or Twitters or these fun, exciting things. We, we're Amazon, and, it, and it's that, ability to take orders in in multiple currencies, multiple languages, have them coming in from all around the world and then being shipped out all around the world with tickets being delivered in the right places, the shows going on, the t-shirts arriving, the digital content arriving in the right format, in the right places at the right time. 
is a huge chunk of work. It's not something that any company can come along and go, I'm going to do this in two years and I'm going to be a startup. It's like, you're not. It doesn't matter if you had a hundred million pounds that you're going to throw at it, you're still not going to be able to build that very quickly. So unless there are players in the market right now that have actually worked all that out, I'd be surprised actually if there are going to be a lot of new players coming in. They'll come right. in and say that they do it, yeah. whether they actually make it work or not. And that's, it's really important. This is, a, this is an artist's career that's on the line here. When they say to their fans, if you buy it through me, it's going to work and you're going to be treated better than everybody else. If the fan then is treated worse than everybody else because the system doesn't work, that band will never work with you again. I mean, that, sure. and that's fundamental. Yeah. Finally, I left. Uh, I left the, the, the best bit for you for last. Uh, so a quick pitch on, on what Music Glue is and, and what you guys do. Oh, uh, we are a director, director uh, consumer services platform. We focus primarily on e-commerce. Um, so whether you want to sell uh, your digital content, your merchandise, your tickets, um, we can do, take care of all of that. Doesn't matter where you are in the world. Um, we can account to you in 26 different currencies. Um, we're taking money in in 26 currencies, um, and it's not it's not small. Not only small bands, and we certainly cater for the small bands. And it's about scale. It's about providing a service that someone who's just starting can use and understand and make their way through it, all the way through to bands that will be selling out arena tours where we're doing all of the tickets. Um, some some of our largest acts will do their own festivals. These are 30,000 capacity festivals, wow. of which we do 100% of the ticketing. And that's you know so a band will you know when you've got 200,000 people on your website at nine o'clock on a Friday morning all clicking refresh where the guys in the background that actually make that work so it's a scalable system that's been built up over a long time and we're built organically it's not you know heavily funded by investors that have various goals and they want to achieve it's about a group of people that have got the same mentality that we've got to provide the best service possible to our users and learn and grow with them and yeah well, it puts us in a nice position actually um, I think I'm not aware of anyone any other company globally now that can actually do what we can do on such a global scale awesome. well good pitch and uh, you can find it more on uh, musicglue.com uh, dot com. Dot com. perfect uh, okay. thanks so much